Welcome to the info session of our postgraduate certificate. Let us, let's start with introducing ourselves. I'm Peggy Winkles and you will, I'm an architect and you will see me mainly in the design studio of the first semester of our postgraduate certificate. Besides being part of the Building Beyond Borders team, I'm also coordinator of an international parallel design studio at Hasselt University. Good evening, my name is Jasper. Um, I'm an architect. I studied at uh, St. Lucas um, Architecture School in, in Ghent. Um, I worked a few years as an architect. I did some time um, a research project at the University of Hasselt um, on earth architecture. And right now I'm part of uh, BC Materials, where we're working with uh, earth construction materials. Hello, my name is Nicola Kuckelbergs and I'm a teacher at UASOLT, uh, at Building Beyond Borders. Also, I'm co-founder of BC Architect Studies and Materials. Good evening. Um, my name is Griet Verbeek. I'm a professor at the Faculty of Architecture and Art of Hasselt University, and I'm the coordinator of the research group on uh, sustainability. And I will, within the postgraduate, um, I will be mainly responsible for the theoretical parts. Hello, my name is Elke Knape. I'm also a professor at the Faculty of Architecture and Art of uh, Hasselt University. I'm, uh, my research focuses on sustainable material use and on uh, regenerative construction materials. Our postgraduate certificate is not an isolated program, but it is part of the Building Beyond Borders platform. Besides the postgraduate certificate, we also have spring workshops, a fall symposium, a biannual symposium. There, are, there is the Parallel Master Design Studio Global Perspectives, there is the research team, and there are internships. Our postgraduate certificate is an act and learn program. It's open to graduates and professionals, and every edition has a special focus. Nicholas will um, explain our previous postgraduate certificate life project. What makes this postgraduate certificate unique is that you have a self-designed real-life project. Two years ago, we had the first edition of Building Beyond Borders Postgraduates. Uh, we were a group of 18 students, a very international group. We had students coming from all over the world, even from uh, far Ethiopia, um, but also Italian, French people, um, a very multidisciplinary team also. We had architects, but also builders uh, joining uh, in the team. And this uh, edition, this first edition, um, the project that we were doing was for remote um, community in um, uh, Morocco called um, uh, the community of Ouled Merzouk. And how did we start that? Well, uh, our 18 participants didn't know yet um, what could become this um, women's center. Would it be um, a house? Would it be uh, which function should it host? Uh, how big should it be? Should it be in an existing building? The community gave us uh, a specific site, but left it quite open to 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 think about it if it should be somewhere else. So what we uh, started to do is first to map the, the 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 entire village, and we translated that in a very nice way. We made a newspaper um, in order to to summarize all this information that we gathered, um, and this happened actually during the first semester of uh, the postgraduate. After that first semester and this all mapping, we uh, divided ourselves in different teams. Uh, the, the students were divided, I think, in, in teams of um, three to four uh, people in order to envision and make uh, a certain um, design for the Women's Center. And then that design was transformed and submitted to the to the, um, the client that were the, the community of the women of Ulen Merzouk. Um, we decided one um, uh, design that we could work further on. And so in a, in a, in a very participatory approach, we, we managed to, to, uh, to make one, uh, one design that could be um, further uh, worked on in order to be built 
uh, in Ulan Majuk. So the design that we came to is, is very simple. We I will show you a video um, of one of the participants explaining uh, the project. We are standing in the village of Ulet Meksuk. It's a small village uh, not so far from Warzazat. It's a special village for me because it's a kind of street village. It has different aspects. Uh, it has its mountains, but it also has its river, the Palmarais, and then it has a road that's going on for about four kilometers, I think. And on the roads there are the houses. What's also important is it has different uh, neighborhoods. So I, I was living in Agadin. It's the neighborhood f far away from the big road. Uh, it's uh, kind of different also the people there than, also, than here the, the neighborhood of Laksar. Uh, it takes a long time by walking if you want to see the whole village. The Women's Association asked us to build a women's center. They chose a uh, place for us. And what's really nice about the place is that it's really in the center of the village. That's why we also thought about it's really nice because it has a connection with the north part of the village, but it also has a connection with the south part to make it, uh, give it the building two facades. If you can see, we are not building uh, down where the most of the, the, the houses are. We are building a little bit up, but it's also nice because it's a pub public building. So it takes a little distance from the house. And if you can see later how it integrates in the landscape, um, there was a small hill and we really put the building, shaped it in the mountain and we tried to keep it really like small, not too big. So that it's, it's kind of a monument, it's maybe kind of the landmark, but it's really subtle. So you can see it, but it's not really like a big kashba. The program of the building was, um, the woman asked, kind of two uh, different uh, places to meet. Uh, they ask uh, an atelier and they ask uh, a kitchen. If you can see, it's, it's one building, but it also has two buildings inside. So, and it's connected by a cour, a kind of semi-public space that connects the both sides of the two small buildings that are inside the uh, granite walls, the granite uh, building. <laughs> So as you can see, um, and as Tine explained really well, this project is about a lot of different aspects. It's discovering uh, different ways of uh, developing architecture. Participants didn't play only the role of the architect um, by designing, but also played the role of the engineer, of um, the um, manager of the clients, of um, the builder, uh, they had to be contractor. So they played many, many roles in order to make that project succeed uh, in, all of, in all those aspects. Thank you, Nicolas. So as we saw in Morocco, we learned in last edition a lot from the local craftsmen, which was super important. We learned a lot about uh, local materials as well. In the next edition, we'll be dealing with similar thematics, in fact, just in a city context instead of the rural context of Morocco. So we will be working in the city of Brussels. And as in the Morocco edition, we will make it an active studio. That's why we call it architecture of extra action, through workshops, through building prototypes, etc. We also want you to interact with each other a lot, that it's not a one way postgraduate where you can also teach to someone else. So the idea is that we will reflect on how we can design with finite resources in mind. We will design and build with our future world in mind. So the thematic there from this year in Brussels is exploring the regenerative and distributive potential of urban harvesting. So it's about making use of this urban harvesting. It's about designing for scarcity as well, a future-proof design and build. Um, we will do the next postgraduate in collaboration with three companies that we have that have built an expertise in urban mining um, and acting all of them in the city of Brussels. So we will be investigating together the possibility to create a building, a place together. Together with you, we would like to reflect and act on what such a place could look like using all these opportunities of urban harvesting. 
So let me just briefly introduce uh, these partners. So BC Material, that's um, where Nicolas and myself are working for. Um, we are mainly focusing on geosourcing. So we'll show you how to transform excavated soils from building sites into building materials. That's what we daily do. We have a production on these materials and we transform it into rammed dirt, compressed dirt blocks uh, and clay plasters. So here you see a picture of our current uh, production hall in the harbor of Brussels. Roter, another partner that we're very proud of to collaborate with. Uh, they define themselves as a co cooperative design practice that investigates the organization of the material environment. So we'll discover together with them the world of deconstruction and salvaging building materials. Um, and thirdly, there is a Sonian Wood Corp. Um, Sonian Wood Cooperative, they work with, with forest owners, with sawmills, with carpenters and other partners to keep the wood from the Sonian Wood Forest. So a forest in, uh, just next to Brussels, it's actually really part of Brussels still. Um, and they want to keep this forest and the wood that comes out of it as local as possible. So they will teach to us how they manage to harvest the trees in the Sonian Forest of Brussels and transform it to building and design materials. So if you are in need of some extra action, then we'd say join us. Here you see a picture of us creating um, a prototype in the museum in Antwerp, the VIE. We will have a collaboration with Z33, which is a museum in Hasselt. We'll have the possibility to create prototypes, one-on-one -on -one scale models, as you see here, um, in actual materials and make them part of this, uh, of this exhibition um, in, in Hasselt. So, uh, here you see another picture of, uh, of the museum setting, um, another model as well. There was also a possibility to show uh, radio research uh, projects. Uh, so in general, we will be working on, on three different scale levels, partly the component level, the building level, and really looking also at the city level, the, the social level as well. This is, uh, on these three materials represented by the three enterprises that have built up this, this expertise so far. Thank you. Um, as Jasper uh, told um, you, there is on one side a focus on, on materiality and on urban harvesting, but um, this research and design on these materials will be framed in a, a broader focus. And uh, we will use the um, donut uh, as a sustainability compass, the donut as it has been developed by Kate Rayward, um, where in fact the donut is a model for, for sustainability, where we have on one side the ecological ceiling that represents the planetary boundaries that we should not overshoot uh, in order to create a safe space for us. But of course, uh, only a safe space is not enough. We also want to contribute to uh, making, uh, to creating a social foundation, uh, which means a good life for all. And so to create also just space. And this will be the model that we will use to um, confront and 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 uh, check our all, all activities upon um, this theoretical concept of the donut is um, um, operationalized to make more concrete through the four lenses uh, of the city portrait uh, developed by the Thriving Cities Initiative. And you have a local social lens, a local ecological lens, a global social lens, and a global ecological lens. And in fact, with these four lenses, for you can use it for um, an, an, a policy action, an activity, a building project, and so on, and use them to check whether um, that project, for instance, local social lens, what it would mean uh, this project um, in order to uh, support uh, people uh, of the city where you work in uh, to support them to thrive. The local ecological lens looks at how this project or this um, action, what it would mean uh, for the city or for the place to thrive within its natural habitat. The global ecological lens is looking at what this action would mean as um, a way of respecting the health of the whole planet and the global social lens then looks at what this action would mean um, in respecting the well-being of people worldwide. And if we um, 
look at, if we think of the urban harvesting, which is uh, um, for most uh, based on the uh, um, resource scarcity. This is uh, mainly uh, focused or mainly linked to the global ecological lens, but with the extra action that uh, is in the title of our program, it also means that we don't just want to focus only on that uh, resource scarcity, but want to look how this can be extended by incorporating the other lenses uh, that um, are available. And um, we can do this with different attitudes towards sustainability. And here you see the, the letter of, at, at, um, of attitudes. And well, the, the first is just doing what is legally required, but, uh, which of course is not where we want to stop. Um, the second is doing only what provides a financial return, which at this moment is very often, well, a common attitude towards sustainability, but, but which for us also is not enough. Uh, one step further is doing your fair share um, in contributing towards sustainability, but there, this, the backside could be that it also can become about taking your fair share in, for instance, pollution. So we want to, to move on, on uh, further. Um, and next step is about causing no harm, uh, which is also calls, uh, ca called mission zero. But also there we um, ask, um, why stop at uh, zero impact? Uh, why uh, why not doing a step further? And so that's where we want to end and which also creates a paradigm shift is in fact acting from an attitude of creating positive impact, creating a generous design. And so this is our the attitude that we want to adopt within the postgraduate, um, within the actions and the activities that we will uh, undertake. At the end of this info session, I will give some more practical information. Um, as was already uh, mentioned by Peggy at the beginning of the presentation, the Building Beyond Borders program um, consists of lectures, uh, hands-on experiments, design studio, uh, workshops, uh, discussions, and of course, a design and build project. The program is divided into three modules, theory and design, act and develop, build, and reflect. And in the first module, theory and design, we will give you some theoretical background on regenerative and distributive design. We will do that in four thematic uh, sessions, of course, on materials and circular approaches, but also on social cultural aspects, on climate responsive design, on biodiversity and landscape. And in this, theory, in this theoretical course, um, we will have a mix of lectures, exercises, workshops and discussions. In the design studio of module A, um, we will focus on explorative design. We will investigate the potential of regenerative and distributive design by means of a design by research approach. Um, there will also be hands-on experiments and a lot of prototyping with regenerative materials. In the second module, Act and Develop, um, we will put theory and design into practice in a living lab setup. Uh, that means that the ideas and the designs that we generated in module A will be uh, verified by means of prototyping, by small scale um, interventions, and of course, a real life project. In fact, the second module is a kind of a preparation phase for the internship uh, in module three. Uh, for the internship, we will collaborate, as was already mentioned by Jasper with Z33 uh, in an exhibition. In fact, you will be able to participate in the dynamic part of the exhibition by organizing uh, debates, workshops. In fact, the exhibition will be a kind of a laboratory uh, in which we will build together with craftsmen and so on. In this uh, internship, you will be able to define your own focus and elaborate on a project of your own interest. The course language uh, is English. Um, in the periods between September and March, we will have weekly classes on Fridays from the morning until the evening. There will also be two workshop weeks, one in September and one in uh, at the beginning of February, and some occasional excursions. 
The four-week internship will take place between April and August. An important aspect is the study load of the program. In fact, the postgraduate certificate is a 30 ECTS program, which is in fact a half-time um, program, and you need to uh, you need to take into account a study load of more or less eight. Uh, hundred hours. That is partly um, based on those weekly classes, but there will be also be a substantial part on self-study on predefined topics within specific ex assignments that, of, that are, of course, related to the project. We will not organize uh, traditional exams, but we will um, have a pass-fail grading system, uh, which means that it will be necessary to attend the weekly classes and the workshop weeks. And of course, there will be some specific assignments. If you're interested to apply for the postgraduate certificate, uh, you can find more information on uh, our website. You will have to upload your diploma and CV and your application will be assessed uh, by means of your portfolio and a personal motivation. It is important to apply before the 15th of May and then we will inform you on the selection results by June 1st. But for um, uh, participants or in, uh, in, uh, candidates that are interested to uh, um, apl apply for the postgraduate pr uh, program and that are uh, not from the EU, we ask them to contact us uh, as soon as possible and uh, we will ask them to apply before the 1st of May uh, due to the visa requirements to make sure that the visa can be uh, obtained on time. The registration fee for the postgraduate uh, certificate is 3,500 euros. Um, for employees of Flemish SMEs, we um, encourage them to apply for a KMO portfolio, um, which means that they can have uh, substantial financial support of this KMO portfolio uh, for part of the uh, registration fee. We also have a limited number of scholarships for a part of the registration fee, um, but though they are mainly intended for participants of developing uh, countries, and they will be um, uh, well. We will evaluate evaluate uh, your portfolio and your financial situa situation. So, if you want to apply for a scholarship, please contact us as soon as possible. You can also find more information, information on the visa applications and on living in Belgium on our website. So this was more or less uh, the end uh, of this info session. We would like to thank you for attending this session. And uh, if you have any further questions, please uh, contact us by email. You can find uh, our email address on our website. And we are really looking forward to meeting you in Belgium very soon. Bye.